Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host Bill Spicer. On this week's show we've flown in 60 miles north of the town of Wawa at Pine Portage Lodge. Our quarry for this week? Pike and lots of them. We'll talk about flies, technique and equipment. Everything you need to know to learn about pike fishing. It's going to be another great one folks so stay with us. We'll be right back. Let him go back to live another day. And away he goes. Great fish. Wow. Oh, baby. Look at that fish. Stop. Wiggle. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Algoma Kinawabi Travel Association, Ontario Tourism, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions. On this week's show, the new Fly Fisher crew travels to Pine Portage Lodge in beautiful northern Ontario. In business since 1946 and located on 25 mile long Cabby Lake, 72 air miles from the town of Wawa. Cabby Lake is renowned for its numerous islands and bays and provides ideal structure for walleye and pike. We have had a number of cold fronts pass through in the last few days and this will make fishing extra challenging. I will have to experiment with different techniques and flies to have success. Decides to pull. Now this felt just like a, a weight had uh, appeared on the end of my line. It wasn't a strike so much. Now this is, this is interesting. We have a front coming through, a big front coming through, and I think the fish are trying to feed up as quick as they can before the front hits. And this is not a very big one. Just we call them hammer handles. Small one, but we got a front coming and I think that's what's turning them on. Changing weather conditions such as cold fronts will challenge your angling skills. This is mainly because cold fronts send most fish into a negative feeding mood. A cold front is the edge of a colder air mass that moves in on a warmer air mass. Rain, High winds and overcast skies occur in the initial stages of most cold fronts. After the edge of the cold front passes, typical weather conditions are bright skies, few clouds and cooler temperatures. How does this affect fishing? Change in air pressure affects fish because their buoyancy in the water is controlled by an air sac. This is very sensitive and the fish will feel the slightest change in air pressure. It's generally believed that the falling pressure tends to make fish more active and a rising pressure shuts them down. Therefore, when a front is approaching us, the pressure is dropping until it arrives, and then it begins to rise. Thus, fish tend to bite best before an approaching front and generally not so good after it passes. technique I'm using is a slow retrieve, just a jerk, wait, jerk, wait, jerk, and I might twitch the rod like so. This isn't a steady retrieve, we want to make it erratic. Move the angle back and forth, that sometimes trigger, triggers a strike. When a pike believes that its bait is getting away from it, then they strike. Ooh. Oh, good one. And we got a decent fish on here. Decided to, to jump. Yeah. In a back bay here, it's nice and calm right now. 
And then this fish likes a red and white, which is typical for with pike. Seems to attract them. And he hoovered this one. I'll let, uh, Dave, can you just net that one for me, please? Yep. Well, that's good. Well, that's a start. Now, have you got some jaw spreaders, I hope? <laughs> I got the, I got the jaw of the lake. Oh, and there he goes. <laughs> oh, well, that's all right. That's all right. Fish, got, fish decided to leave before we could put them on camera for you. But that was a decent fish. I what I've had to do is really slow down my presentation. Uh, they're not aggressive at all right now. They're in a, a kind of a neutral mood. Uh, the time of year that I'm here is August, and we're in a transitional where the fish are coming in from the deep back into the shallows to feed, and it's just periodic right now. They're not very aggressive at all. So slow down, and when I say slow, I mean really, really slow. The Watson family has owned and operated Pine Portage Lodge in Northern Ontario since 1946. Mr. Richard Watson Sr. started with a rustic three-room cabin on 24 acres of land on the north shore of Cabby Lake. After many years of upgrading and renovations at Pine Portage Lodge, they now offer a 6,000 square foot main lodge with wireless internet and 13 guest cabins of various sizes. These provide accommodations for up to 100 guests on the American plan and housekeeping combined. All cottages are constructed of upright logs and are comfortably furnished with queen and single beds. All bedding and towels are provided and are changed as needed. They pride themselves on quality of service and accommodations provided. They operate with a staff of 25 full-time seasonal staff through the summer, ensuring all your needs are met. Only 10% of the water at any given time possesses a combination of ideal characteristics such as temperature, oxygen content, structure, food, and cover that pike will be seeking under prevailing water and weather conditions. The overwhelming majority of pike will be found in that 10% of the water. When trying to locate any pike, you must think structure. This structure may be an underwater hump, the edge of a weed line, a felled tree or brush pile, an isolated rock, or anything man-made such as a dock. Pike are extremely object oriented There's a saying, you may find structure that is not holding pike, but you will never find a pike without structure. Yes, sir. Out of the deep, out of the deep. Let's hope he stays on this time. Just a small one. Boy, I was hoping he was bigger. <laughs> but getting some action now. We're letting the wind blow us across these weed beds. And what I'm doing is I'm going along a cast out and then I, uh, I'm twitching back and forth. Just a small one. I'm twitching my rod back and forth as we're going through, as the wind is pushing us, and we're going over top of the weeds. So I want my, my fly to get this kind of a motion. Oh, there's another one, another good size one. That's a better fish. Well, our technique is working, and this is a good fish. He, uh, he's taking line on me. Yes, much better fish. I haven't had a look at him yet, he's staying down, which indicates it's generally a big fish when they do that. Yeah. Oh yes, much better fish. Much better fish, yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll need the net on this one, Dave. And I lead him to the net. And then hopefully all Dave got to do is just lift up, yeah. Okay. There we go. And pike fishing. 
Gotta love it. These are so aggressive, these fish. So aggressive. And away it goes. One of the nice things about visiting Pine Portage Lodge is the wildlife. You may see at any given time a moose or a black bear, loons, ducks, and my particular favorite, bald eagles. I was pleased at the abundance of eagles in the area. Now, the equipment for pike fishing. It's plain and simple, you need to beef up your equipment. Pike can get quite large, and they fight hard. Uh, they got tough mouths, so thus, what I'm using is a number eight weight, nine foot rod. Now this is a beefy rod, it's a tip flex, and it's got lots of, lots of power in the, in the butt section for setting the hook. The reason you need that is pike have very tough mouths, and you need to get the hook driven into the mouth, so thus the need for the power. Now your reels, that's an optional whether you want a large arbor or a, a, just a spindle type of, of reel, whatever your choice is there, as long as it has a good drag system. These fish will really tax your drag systems. Uh, they can go for long runs, go down deep and, and bulldog on you, so you really need the good drag system. Lines, I'm using a full sinking line today. Um, the reason I'm using a full sinking line is the fish are a little deeper today, and I want the line to go down and remain at the same level for a longer period of time. Rather than a, a sinking tip or an intermediate sinking line, it'll ride up like that when I, when I retrieve it. I don't want that. I want the, the, the fly to remain down near the bottom. Now the technique I'm using today is I'm pinpointing different weed patches and I'm casting to them. I'm not casting far, 20, 25 feet at the most, and I'm twitching my return back like that. Change in directions often. A change of direction generally gets a strike because the fish feels that their prey is getting away from them. So change, change this way. Anything you can think of. To, to make it irregular movement. You don't want a steady pull like this. That's not what you want. You want irregular movement. So cast, jerk, jerk, twitch, twitch, and that should instill a strike. Like I said, pinpointing each weed pile. Oh, you know what I got here? I got myself a very nice walleye. Very nice walleye. This is a bonus for me. Whoa, well, and away he goes. Well, that's, that's part of it with barbless hooks. That's just part of it with barbless hooks. Uh, the actual hook, and I'll, and I'll show it to the camera here. These are, these are quite nice. Uh, you don't even have to bend a barb. I don't know if the camera can see it. There's no barb on it whatsoever. It's store-bought like that. And that, that happens. You, you'll lose the occasional fish like that, but when you take the fish, uh, the, the hook out of the fish, it's much easier on them, and you can release them alive. Well, we'll go back up, and we're going to try that again. When pike fishing, you need to upscale your flies to much larger flies. Now, today I used a combination of two types of flies, attractor patterns, and sort of match the hatch, which they have a lot of perch around here and shiners, so I tried to match what they were actually eating. The first pattern I had was this jointed attractor pattern here. It's made of deer hair, it moves a lot of water, it bends, it has a very, very nice motion in the water. It took some fish. It's a good attractor pattern. Don't know why they eat it, just, just interested, I guess. Uh, looks like something good to eat. The second, and what every good pike fisherman must have in their bag, is a red and white. 
Going back to my lure days, the best lure for pike was called a daredevil, and a daredevil was red and white. For some reason, pike like red and white, and this produced quite a few fish here. Uh, twitch in motion, uh, not a straight uh, stripping back, but twitch, give it some action. That thing really works. It's a type of bunny leech itself, red and white. Now my match to, match to hatch was this type of minnow pattern here. This, uh, I, I, I take it, was the shiner minnow. Uh, they really liked it. Uh, it moves well when you twitch it and darts back and forth. So this was another good choice. And it's at least six inches long. So you, you, that's about as, as small as I would go on these flies. And the last fly is a double hooked. I'm gonna have to watch myself here because there's two hooks on here. A double flied perch pattern here. And as you can see, this looks like a perch. When, when it's in the water and gets, and gets wet, the bottom shows really well, which is orange. And then the perch, the, the vermicular, vermicular uh, stripes show up really well. So this was another good pattern. The next day our strategy was to run and gun. This means trying a spot for a short time, and if no fish are active quickly, we move on to the next spot. Yes, sir. <laughs> Whoa, it's got some spunk for such a small fish. I think I can get this one at the side of the boat here. Just a small one. But like I say, I've never met a fish I didn't like. And away he goes. A must item when fishing for any fish with teeth is a good wire leader system. I uh, pike, musky, and even walleye have a lot of sharp teeth. And if you just go straight onto your monofilament, you're gonna lose a lot of flies and be unhappy at the end of the day. What I've got here is a good knottable wire system here. You can actually tie fishing knots with this. It works really well, it's 50 pound test. Nothing's gonna break through that. So this is one item you must have. on yes sir ha <laughs> ha what we're doing is is we're running and gunning weed beds to find active ones and what I'm doing is once we get in the weed bed we've slowed right down and I'm just pin, pinpointing each weed and just stripping the, the line back and forth and making it jig up and down and this guy come out of nowhere it's a decent fish yes sir yeah. Good man. That's a, it's a long one. A little on the skinny side, but it's long. <laughs> see if we can get that. Can I get your pliers off you, sir? Thank you. And away he goes. The American Plan meals at Pine Portage Lodge are nothing short of outstanding. Home cooked and delicious and leaving the table hungry is frowned upon. A perfect ending to a fish filled day. But if you want, you can come and cook your own meals as they have housekeeping plans to fit your budget.
came out of nowhere. <laughs> out of nowhere. What, what they do is they, they lay on the bottom of the, of the lake, and when they see it pass over top, they, they come up like a, just like a rocket and hit it. it sometimes takes your breath away. <laughs> there he is, yeah. Boy, I'm having some fun today. Still, the big elusive one hasn't got to me yet, but come here, you. And oh, it's a marvelous hook. Yeah. And away he goes. My time at Pine Portage's Lodge has run out, and in keeping with us telling it like it is, this was not my trip for big fish. I managed almost non-stop action, but that elusive big one was not to be. That said, other guests at the lodge had a lot of fish to brag about. Many fish measuring up to 40 inches were taken, and lots of smiling faces. Wow, wasn't that a great time? The lesson we learned this week is versatility. I had to be versatile and change things up. I started off with long retrieves, long casts, didn't work. The fish did not want anything like that. They wanted short casts, twitching retrieves, and pinpointing all the weeds. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines and we'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. For videos like the one you just saw and more, subscribe to our channel. You don't want to miss our weekly uploads of educational videos, exciting trips, and much more.